Hello, everybody. Aaron Outdoors here. Well, Aaron Daly. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> June 11th, vlog number 39. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Quite pleased with myself. I've been doing a lot of work on my camp, getting uh, shade going for summer. It's an important thing to surviving heat in California, it is shade. Good ceiling shade but no walls, so you have open space for airflow. Keeps things pretty cool, no matter how warm it gets. Interesting thing about being in the mountains is even if it's the middle of summer, at night it usually gets pretty cool. <laughs> um, just because of the higher elevation, which is nice. Because um, there's one thing that sucks, is trying to sleep when it's really just way too warm, right? Yeah, agreed. Anyway... So, yeah, a lot of work done in camp. It's left me very satisfied. I've just been, you know, taking a look at it, and it's all, like, nice and neat and orderly. I've been doing a lot of work on my website. Um, I got Google Site Kit set up as a plugin for my new site, which I didn't realize that I could do, but it doesn't really matter. I am this close to scrapping the entire news thing um, and just turning it into... There's still going to be an AM Daily News but it's going to be news about me. <laughs> so it's basically just going to be a website for my personal blog, vlog, whatever. Probably. Um, yes. Which brings me to why I wanted to make a video in the first place. <clears throat> my obsession with geopolitics is kind of getting shoved back on the back burner. Um, because, duh. <laughs> it's just other things are more important right now and that's just like there's no way for me to justify spending a lot of time on that right now um because it's in no way contributing to an increase to the quality of my life <laughs> yeah it's not increasing my quality of life in any way uh, well I, I, okay well it's increasing my knowledge i've learned a lot definitely um and i've had some very very interesting conversations um but I, i'm just ugh, outdoors i i didn't want to do this in the first place you know it's there's a lot to be said for being one with nature and living out in the woods and if you're going to be stuck outdoors definitely being in the national forest is way better than living on the street i can't even fathom it's, okay, yeah, so this gets me back to the whole thing. So I'm kind of trapped. And, and I want to talk about this because it helps me to work things out if I talk about it. And my vlog is my only <laughs> real confidant other than my dogs. But I feel like if I put this out on the internet at least, I don't know. It makes me feel more, it gives me a greater sense of responsibility to my goals. If that makes any sense makes me feel like I've, oh, I've said these things publicly and people might possibly, you know, possibly <laughs> hear that I said this one day and then call me out on it if I haven't followed up. So, you know, it, it's just an effort to, like, kick my own ass into gear and do more things. Because um, I'm not doing enough. There's more I can do. Because um, I'm absolutely committed to the idea of, I'm not, I'm not doing minimum minimum wage work ever again i'm just not i'm just not <laughs> period um if mcdonald's suddenly decides to pay 30 dollars an hour maybe i might think about it but even then i just i don't want to do anything that i don't believe in first of all i don't want to do anything that i generally despise and abhor like i don't eat at mcdonald's i would never eat at mcdonald's now um that took me a while to get over because i grew up with that i was brainwashed with that too as a kid you know i loved that my parents used to take us out as a special treat to McDonald's to get Happy Meals, especially on Sundays after church. Like, it was a big deal to me. <laughs> that was going out to eat for me. <laughs> it was as fancy as it got. Usually. Well, no. no. Pizza Hut was as fancy as it got. No. No, no. There was this one place that we used to go to for brunch occasionally, on very special occasions. And I think it was only when Grandma would treat us. But it was this some fancy bed and breakfast it wasn't really it was nice it was really nice and the food was great 
We used to go there every once in a while. So, yeah. Generally speaking, that Pizza Hut was about as fancy as it got. Because this is just what all there was, first of all, where I grew up in Malone, New York. There's just not a lot there. Um, getting a Pizza Hut was a big deal. Getting a Kmart was a big deal. If they even still have one. I wonder if they have a Target or a Walmart yet. They must by now. Regardless, they've definitely got Amazon. So anyway... I don't want it to go back to minimum wage work. I want, I am a smart person. I can come up with a business idea. I have just never spent any time really trying to do it. Um, I run my own business, actually, <laughs> um, successfully. Because <laughs> I used to have my own grow, my own uh, cannabis grow on more than one occasion. Um, and I was responsible for my supply and I was just responsible for getting rid of it <laughs> um and i was quite good at it and the only reason anything went bad was because strippers and coke man <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't have that weakness <laughs> especially in boulder colorado man boulder colorado at the time only had one strip club and it's not like Let's just say the girls are above average <laughs> for strip clubs, <laughs> which is a lesson I had to learn when I tried working at one as a DJ in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> and I was literally mortified. <laughs> <laughs> by the dancers they had there. It had like two girls that were like, whoa. <laughs> and this girl that I, oh, it's on a whole nother story. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I tried being a DJ as a, as a strip club DJ for a while. <laughs> a long time ago. This was back in 2011. Um, that could have been cool, too. It's such an interesting situation, too. It was such a strange place. It was owned by this these Russian guys who were definitely up to something else. I have no idea what, but they were very... It was just they were very obviously not concerned with the success of the club <laughs> and very obviously concerned with other things. I don't know. But, I mean, they had good weekends. The weekends were always good there. Um, but I was just the guy they had there to fill the time during the weekdays and there's usually just one or maybe two dancers there it was like the worst like just damn dude <laughs> i had no enthusiasm for the job because you're supposed to like prep, prep, you know pump these like basically like sell these you know not sell the women but like you know get guys excited to you know tip and like you know i just like i, I was like <laughs> it took everything I had to come up with like nice things to say about them. <laughs> I just hated doing it every time because I just knew I didn't mean any of it. <laughs> oh my god, it was just it was bad. Ugh. <laughs> oh my, yeah, I had a long history of strip clubs for a while. I was really into dating strippers for a while. <laughs> it's not a always a bad idea i mean this one girl who was really amazing. i met a lot of girls actually who were, who, who were really amazing and dancers um because different women do it for different reasons you know it's like anything else um some people do it because they have you know abandonment insecurity daddy issues and others just do it because they have spare time or they need money for college there's a lot especially in boulder colorado there's a lot of girls who are doing it to be in college. And so that that alone is like a whole different class of stripper right there. <laughs> because immediately you're dealing with, like a lot of them were like, this one girl was going to school for professional dance, for like ballet and stuff. <laughs> and she's really good at it. Like that's what she does now. She has her own like little private performing arts company and like instructs and all that stuff is what she went on to do. But when I knew her... <laughs> Well, <laughs> she was much a different person from her professional life now, to say the least. <laughs> she was awesome. We had a good time. So, <laughs> anyway, 
yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about all. Oh, yeah, so the the weed business. But then there were other girls. <laughs> I have the kind of personality where I just kind of amplify whatever I'm with. Whoever I'm with. And that's not just with girlfriends. That's just with people in general. I, I amplify the personalities. And I, I reflect and amplify the personalities of those I'm around. Which is one reason why I've been spending a really lot, a lot of time alone away from people. <laughs> Because it was just necessary to figure out who I am. I had to dig through all these personalities that I've been absorbing for decades. <laughs> Without really thinking about it or giving it any thought. Um, so that's just what I... It's, it's weird like that. I've talked about this to, before to the extent where like when I'm, when I'm around people with accents, I will literally start without any conscious effort mimicking their accent. I'll just start talking like them, no matter what the accent is. Even if the accent isn't like a legitimate like language accent, it's like a broken... Because I developed this broken English accent when I was in India because I ran into people from, from so many different countries, and everybody was speaking in broken English for the most part. Um, and so I actually started talking like I, in a way that made it sound like English wasn't my first language. Um, because you'll notice, so what happens is when you talk to somebody who's not talking in their native language and they like, they know the second language, but it's not like real good and they have to like, it, words don't come instantly. So they have to pause and think a lot about the word that they have, they have to look in their minds for the word that, that it equates to the word in their own language. And so you get this, this whole like, uh, yes, yeah, so we were um, uh, um, at the house going to the, the, the streets. Go ahead and, the, and there's always like a slight tinge of their own accent in it. And so I would do that. But what was actually going on in my mind was instead of searching for the words to say, I was searching in my mind for words that I felt was, were more likely to be understood. And if you turn uh, talk to anybody who's like into learning languages really fast, um, this makes total sense because there's they say there's like only like a hundred words or something that you really need to know to to engage in like gossip or you know just have basic conversations with people in any language. Um, and so you know they're thinking of the hundred words that they know, and I'm trying and I'm slowing down and breaking up my speech to th to think of the hundred words that they probably know <laughs> you know i'll be i'll go to say something you know um like imagination and then say, oh but they might not understand that <laughs> and try to break it that's not a good example but anyway you get the point oh. and um yeah it's a thing with me um it's why i put in my bio culture chameleon um because i really am i mean into the to the extent that like a chameleon, <laughs> whatever culture I'm around, I just, my, I naturally absorb and, and, um, appropriate <laughs> for lack of a better word. There's another word I'm trying to think of. This is another reason I need to do this more. I just need to get in the habit of talking more. Like once I get going, I always say this, <laughs> I always forget because I'll spend like, you know, an hour trying to talk myself into just setting the camera up and just hitting record and just start talking. So once I get going, <laughs> it's really easy. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to go back to minimum wage jobs. Um, I know I can think of some kind of business. So I'm trying to think of some kind of business. The best thing. Oh, yeah. And so the news, yeah, is not... A lucrative thing right at this moment um you can't get google ads to or they won't approve a google site can't say that word or <laughs> that it's i gotta turn that off anyway um they won't approve the site for their their adsense program if you uh just have an rss scraper no um they said if you like do some kind of commentary on it or if you're curating it more. So I guess there's more in, I could do more work to like really curate the, the 
news pieces because right now it's just like you know pull the first two or five ads that you get from this different feed and i'm going through a, do a lot of different feeds that are not commonly used <laughs> rss feeds i'll tell you what it's very interesting to me um i'm still thinking about trying to do an app with that or something like that. i don't know anyway point of it all is i don't immediately have the technical skills necessary to really dive into that what I do have the technical skills and resources and everything else I need is to keep going with the print on demand e-commerce store, um, my spring store. And I definitely still have the ability to create new drawings and designs and I'm getting better at that and thinking of new things and taking it in different directions. I'm having a really hard time with the branding because, you know, I did not pick the easiest thing to sell for a brand, Fudashi. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I think one of the first principles of marketing is like create a problem and then present the solution. Or not create a problem, but uh, illustrate a problem or point out a problem that people have and then present your product as the solution to that problem in some way. Um, so how do I take the phrase fuck that shit and turn it into a solution for people's problems in any way whatsoever? I don't know. I'm I'm getting there. I'm working on it. And it's something that I can just keep doing. And uh, it would be so good if I could get back out on the road and actually, because I have some of the items. Like, I've bought some of my own stuff already. I have physical examples of it that I could show people. And whenever I do show it to people and people see it, for the most part... People are like, oh, that's really cool. I've, and I've had people say they want to buy it. And I've even had people tell me they were going to buy it. Um, and then they always don't, but they never say why. I don't know what the deal is with that, but whatever. Um, I understand, because honestly, I don't think I have even hardly... There's like one or two of my original designs that are even still on the store. The rest of them are just like, yeah, this is kind of garbage. And I'm going to feel that way about a lot of the stuff that's there now. Not all of it. The Have a Nice Life. I figured out something really interesting with the uh, Have a Nice Life thing in calling it Have a Nice Life. What was I calling it before? Laser Smile of Life or something like that? Branding is really important. Like how, what, what you title things. Um, and the associations you like. I don't know. Have a Nice Life was vastly more popular <laughs> than Laser Smile of Life. Or laser flowers, I don't know, whatever the fuck stupid name it had. <laughs> because it makes a uh, it makes sense. Because the smiley thing, original, the original T-shirt with the smiley face on it, right, was "Have a nice day." Um, and so mine's got these laser eyes from like I don't know. I just think it looks really cool. Is why I put the lasers on there and left them. Um, and I'm never. I I think it looks awesome. I love it. I'm so glad to have it as a hoodie. I want to buy another one. Um, that's the right size because the one I bought was I was trying out the different sizes to see what they were actually like and so the first thing I ordered was a medium um, and it's just the tiniest bit too small like not even wearable and I'm one of those people who does actually like my hoodies to be just a little bit oversized actually so like an extra large or, or at least a large but definitely really XL is where I'm at um, so I, I want to order another one and I changed the character. I've done a lot with the Fudashi Bob character. I've been gravitating away from anything like Bitcoin related. Not totally. Like I still have the Bitcoin hoodie up there and that Bitcoin Celtic rune one. I want to redo that, change the colors to like different shades of orange. I don't know how that'll show up though with the screen printing because it seems to have a very limited number of colors that it can do. Uh, yada yada. So, yeah, I keep getting these offers from people in Pakistan and China that are uh, clothing manufacturers. Like, they physically make the hoodies and T-shirts, and they do the, like, they'll put your graphic or whatever on it, and you, they'll send them to you. And so that's an interesting option. Like, there's one guy in Gangzhou, China. But then I, I'm scared to do any of those. A, China, because I don't I don't have a problem with doing business with them, but everything's weird right now. <laughs> I mean, there's shipping issues to begin with. Um, and you have to order a minimum amount and I don't have any money for that right now. 
that would have been another way good way to have spent that money that I had a while back that I lost all in crypto. <laughs> Not technically. I still have the crypto. It never goes back up in value. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Whatever. I've made a commitment on that. Um, that's why I had to change my dog food. <laughs> my dog's food regimen. I was buying them dog food with the money I had, but I stopped and found a way to feed them regular food. Um, yeah, using the food stamps, CalFresh. Um, so I'm feeding myself and two dogs with $250 a month. Um, because if I hadn't, I'd be out of money now anyway, and I would still have to do it. But at least this way, I still have some money invested that I am not touching, period, no matter what. So, fingers crossed, you know, if it's a year from now, five years from now, maybe, you know, if I don't get something else going with this e-commerce business, maybe that'll help me out at some point. I just, more than anything, would really like to get into a van that has, like, you know, a proper mobile computer studio thing set up in it with solar panels. I even actually started, like, designing one. <laughs> my ideal version of one because that'd be another another thing i'm trying to figure out if there's some way that i could start a business making ev making uh recreational evs because there's people doing it it's already it's already there's a uh, one group in in europe somewhere i want to say F finland or sweden or something like that one of the nordic countries um and they've actually made a full fully not just electric, but fully solar powered electric recreational vehicle. It's friggin' awesome. Um, it's, you know, it's on my list of things that I would like as much as I would like a, <laughs> a submarine yacht, <laughs> which I would also like to, if I could figure out how to get into business designing, making, and selling submarine yachts, that'd be pretty cool too. Um, I got some ideas for that. I could design the hell out of a submarine yacht. <laughs> I just need. A little bit more education and you know basic submarine ship <laughs> clearly i know so much about building subs and here's my thing i have discovered and this is after having taught myself things like network engineering and how to build my own computers um that nothing's really that complicated there it's it's complicated but it's not complicated because it's difficult to understand. It's complicated because it's just so vast. There's so much. There's so much information that you have to be able to have existing in your brain on an on-call basis. <laughs> um, and the ability, and the, the greater your ability to work with, you know, that level of information. It's like why people who are really good at chess are really smart people. Um, because the farther you can imagine the moves that are going to be made, not just by you, but by your opponent, the likely, the more likely you are to win. Um, and so that, that same dynamic applies to everything, especially when it comes to, you know, science, <laughs> um, anything scientific, mathematical, yada, yada. Why was I talking about this? Oh, yeah. Um. And so that's why I'm just like confident. It's like if I really got into like doing something like designing a submarine yacht, you know, I'd read a book on how to build subs and probably figure it out pretty easily. I wouldn't even have to do that. It's like you just give me a sub. <laughs> so I can reverse engineer. Yeah, I'm really good at reverse engineering things. If it already exists, it's already made, I can look at it, take it apart, and put it back together, and then make my own, um, like I did with computers uh, and with other things too. Um, I'm good at drawing from, you know, if I see something, I can draw it generally. That's why I'm trying to get myself to spend more time, like, imagining things to draw and, like, really focusing on that vision of what it would look like. And it's another reason why I'm into, like, designing my own electric EV rec, EV rec vehicle. What would that be called? A rec? EV? EV rec? Rec? I don't know. Anyway. The more you visualize something, um, the more likely you are to manifest it in your life. Um, 
I've even considered like trying to make like a a crude physical framework of my dream EV rec vehicle using you know sticks <laughs> and mud and stuff. Yeah, you know? just to see how far I could get with it. So I, I have this little thing going out up front. Oh, how's this gonna work? <sighs> And it wasn't meant to be anything. I just had stones. Just, there we go. Stones on the ground. And then I realized that if I kind of straightened out the back end or either side, I could essentially make the foundational framework for the EV or give myself like a, you know, like the space, like a real true to size, true life, full size model. Um, to like plan out the floor, you know, do the floor plan, things like that. And then I thought, well, maybe I could make, go vertical with it and do things like the designed like hideaway bed and desk and areas for the sink and the shower and, um, try to figure out ways you know the different parts of it could expand outwards on the sides i want to have a roof that splits open to either make more headspace but i think ultimately because if you have one of the sprinter vans you don't need more headspace but what you could do is have something that split open on the top to reveal additional solar panels um there's been some interesting they're doing some really interesting things with solar panels right now um they're they figured out some ways there's something called multi-junctional solar panels and they essentially capture different frequencies of light and because of that it it increases the percentage the maximum percentage of energy that can be that can be obtained from light um because they can't i guess when the sunlight's coming it's impossible to get a hundred percent efficiency from a solar panel like you can't capture 100 percent of the light energy that's coming it's something to do with the photons and the way they spread or something like that and then there's different frequencies that they come in at and the panels are designed to collect the light at specific frequency ranges and so because of that some things get missed or skipped over or whatever um, but then they can create different layers on top of each other to catch the different frequencies and there's some kind of balance between like the size and weight of it um, to efficiency. Anyway, they've jumped it up to because it used to be somewhere around 30 percent and now they're getting up to like 40 or 50 percent efficiency. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, and then there's these things with like wafer thin panels. There's a lot of stuff being done with it now that they're actually bothering to like put a lot of money and effort into R&D for solar. Um, cause it's just kind of a dumb moment <laughs> as far as like collecting energy goes. Although there's another interesting, I thought, interesting thing I saw. Japan's created this kind of, um, water turbine thing to go in the ocean and collect ocean current energy. Um, which is not, it was, I found it particularly interesting because I was also thinking about that. I think about a lot of stuff lately cause I'm brainstorming, I'm brainstorming like mad, trying to come up. It's like, I've, this is mostly all in, all day, every day. I was like, hmm, this could be, could I do this for a business? Would this be useful? Because you got to find something that people need. I got to come up with something that people need that I will enjoy the process of producing completely <laughs> um, that has a positive impact on humanity and is highly lucrative. <laughs> So, yeah, those are the parameters for my business, which leaves a lot of room <laughs> for, for ideas. Um, but I've, you know, I, again, I've not spent any real amount of time in my life trying to have come up with a business. It's just not something I've spent time thinking about. This is the first time in my life that I'm actually doing this. Like thinking of it from that perspective as opposed to hmm, where am i going to find work where can i find somebody to pay me to do something that i won't hate so much that i want to kill myself because <laughs> that's a shitty way to live <laughs> it's like even if you find what you're looking for you're not really finding what you're looking for you're just finding something you can tolerate so you can continue to survive 
That sucks. I don't want to survive anymore. I want to thrive. Fuck survival. I'm for thrival. <laughs> I want to thrive, not survive. Yada, yada. Seriously, though. I mean, I didn't really need to take the top off, but... God, I love coffee. Coffee's good for you again. <laughs> Medical people can't make up their minds, man. I, I don't know. I could swear I heard something somewhere that, like, coffee is supposed to be bad for you, but now I'm reading all these articles very recently, in the last few days, talking about how uh, people who drink coffee have longer lives. I don't know. Maybe it's just because we're more active people. We're more active to begin with. I mean, you know, people who want to be lethargic and sit around don't drink coffee. <laughs> uh, and they don't necessarily smoke weed either. Or they don't necessarily not smoke weed. Because I, you know, it makes a big difference the type of weed you smoke. Okay, there's indica and there's sativa. Indica knocks you out and puts you to sleep. But sativa energizes your mind and actually can be very, very energizing and put you in a creative energized mode which is why it's so awesome for things like music and art and whatnot but anything where you've got to imagine and create it's awesome for that um i'm saying this because i was just listening to megan murphy on joe rogan today talking about how she doesn't like weed and i was waiting for it and she said it's like oh but i get paranoid paranoia almost always is caused always is caught when you're smoking weed it's caused due to a lack of of hydration, proper hydration. You just need to drink water. Um, but when you're high and you're dehydrated, your mind is off wandering and it doesn't make the correct association with your dehydration and the panic that you're, you naturally feel when you become start to become dehydrated. Your body's like, hey, you should get some water. Um, but instead of thinking you should get some water, you just start, you just recognize this f- seemingly irrational fear of everything being out to get you, but all you really need to do is just drink a bunch of water. And another thing that really helps a lot is to eat first. <laughs> a, if you get stoned and then eat food, um, the process of eating that food afterwards, it just soaks up all the THC or whatever, and it actually brings you down. Um, so if you eat first, um, it A, reduce, highly reduces the chance of you getting the munchies in the first place, and B, your high will last much longer. Um, the only thing you really need, should and need to be consuming when you're smoking weed or marijuana or cannabis, I don't know what you're supposed to call it. <laughs> I call it pot. <laughs> Read. Read and pot, mostly. Anyway, you just need to drink water. You need to stay hydrated. Soda does not count. <laughs> okay? Coffee doesn't even count. Um... I can do it because I'm used to it. I love smoking weed and drinking coffee. But I have to, you know, make sure that I drink plenty of water also. Or orange juice mixed with... Dude, this stuff is awesome. You can live on this. Like, I pretty much only lately eat brown rice with oats and honey. (laughs) Like, pretty much the same thing I give my dogs. And this stuff mixed in orange juice. It's so good. It's like 44 superfood, uh, high protein. It's it's basically like the muscle like muscle gainer protein stuff, but with 44 superfoods in it, a whole bunch of other stuff, and all the protein is plant protein. And I don't really give a shit. I'm not like vegan at all. <laughs> like not in the slightest. I'm not vegetarian. Uh, it just it looked good. The price was decent. I tried it. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> something and I feel better um when I take this stuff like I feel so much better I feel more clear headed I feel more coherent I feel more positive I feel more creative um like it's nutrition's important man <laughs> nutrition is really important um and yeah there's something in that that's just the right mix that like gives me what I need I have like a much when I and I noticed this recently because I wasn't eating it for a minute because I had this older bottle of it and I drank it with some orange juice but I had eaten some other strange things not that strange just questionable food as far as like you know being good enough to eat 
I forget what it was. It wasn't like I'm eating out of a garbage can or anything. I just like just I don't have refrigeration out here, and sometimes I'll eat meat that I bought the day before, even though it hasn't been refrigerated overnight. The point is, uh, there were a number of things that could have caused illness, and I got ill. <laughs> And that made me afraid that it had something to do with the protein mix. And so I stopped eating it for a while. And when I stopped eating it, the point of the story is my mood just dropped. And I I was really depressed for like the last week or so until I got this stuff. I got a brand new bottle and bought a bottle of orange juice. I found out the best way to take it is with orange juice. Um, it's like eight ounces of orange juice and one scoop of that stuff. Every day, man, awesomeness, awesomeness. But yeah, I was so depressed and tired. I had no energy, unmotivated, but mostly I was unmotivated because I just, you know, that lethargic feeling you get. Um, maybe if you're younger, you don't get this, but when you get older, <laughs> there's this. No, you get it when you're younger too sometimes, but it's worse when you're older. And it's more, more often if you're not careful about your nutritional intake, um, where you just don't have energy. <sighs> And no matter what you do, eat, drink, it's just you just feel more tired, and all you really can think about doing is going to sleep. <laughs> um, and now, after three days, um, this being day number three, um, just woo, yeah, you know, I'm just back. I'm I'm feeling positive again. I'm out of my little slump because I was feeling really depressed about the whole Google thing. Oh yeah, I got denied for the AdSense thing again because of. Um, RSS thing and so I realized the news thing wasn't going to happen and that was depressing because I dropped a lot of money on that <laughs> on getting the server on the web developers um, mostly on those two things uh, close to at least close to a thousand dollars probably which for me was an epic amount of money yeah when you're living outdoors in a tent a thousand dollars is a lot of money <laughs> but a lot of lessons learned um and I know how to set up WordPress uh, RSS feeds now, or RSS blog scraper. I don't know what to call it, but I know how to do it. <laughs> um, so RSS stands for really simple syndication. Anywho, this is getting incredibly long. And I haven't figured anything out yet. This is supposed to be figuring out like what, oh uh, yeah, what I can do, what I want to do. Well, that's it. It's not figuring it out. I'm doing it. I was trying to get to this point of how, yeah, I feel stuck. Because I want to go out and, like, talk to people and meet people and promote my, my apparel. My hoodies, my t-shirts and stuff. Like, I think more people just saw it. They'd want to get it. And a great way to do that is to wear the stuff and travel around the country. Um, but I have two dogs. <laughs> and a lot of stuff. Hitchhiking is just off the table. I'm not doing that. That's why I ended up staying here in the first place. I had a van when I got here. You can see the video on my YouTube. Please, they're assholes. They took it. <laughs> and I've been pretty much stuck here ever since. <laughs> I was really depressed after that for a long time because I'd, I'd gone through this long ordeal that lasted like a year of finally reaching because I'd been traveling before that uh, and the ultimate goal back then was to get a van. <laughs> and I achieved that goal. And everything that could go wrong did go wrong. <laughs> and I, after two vans, I ended up with no van again and stuck here in Mount Shasta. And that was back in 2014. <laughs> and I was indoors for a while. I managed to get myself inside and I started, I spent a year working at McDonald's before it made me suicidal. And I was like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> um, and I was going to go back outdoors then, but then I got an offer to do uh, maintenance at the, on the property I was living on. And so that was tolerable for about three years before that went south. Um, and I ended up back outdoors. And at first, I had in my head, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go back outdoors, but I've got this e-commerce thing going, and I'm going to go travel and promote my stuff, and I'm going to talk to people, and it's going to be great. It's going to be so awesome this time because I have all this gear, and I can actually, like, make videos of my travels like, like I couldn't before and live stream. It's going to be so great. And then I got outdoors, and I remembered immediately why I wasn't doing that to begin with. Because <laughs> I have two dogs, and I 
fucking hate hitchhiking. <laughs> and I hate being homeless. And the only way that can happen is if I'm in a van. Uh, and I could have been spent, I could have the last few years, the entire time been working on this e-commerce store. I just didn't know it was an option. It's, it goes, it all goes back to my upbringing. Like you just, I wasn't raised to think in terms of like creating and starting a business. <laughs> if I would have had my head out of my ass, that's exactly what I've been, would have been doing the entire time. I mean, I was kind of, but I, was, I had this weird idea of like Twitch streaming, I, but I was also still too depressed and. I said, I also had no motivation to do anything. I, like, yeah, the whole van thing, like that really broke me and it like kind of killed my reason for it. I was just like, God doesn't want me to have this. And no matter what I do, like, even when I succeed, I'm still fucked by the system. Like, you know, like so many things that went wrong that were out of my hands. It's unbelievable. I mean, they were out of, you know, when things are out of your hands, but in your hands, <laughs> It's like you don't have to do something, but somebody invites you to do something or asks you to do something and you think it's all going to be awesome and great and you go and you do it. And then because of that other person, it turns out to be just complete and total garbage. And then when that happens with a bunch of people in a row over and over again, it costs you two different vans. <laughs> yeah. And then you just, yeah. So I was unhappy for a while. <laughs> it took me a while to get through that. But I got through that. Just not fast enough to start my own business before I ended up outdoors again. Uh, this other thing is I'd really like to just go to Mexico. I have a friend down there. He wants me to come down there, but I don't know how to get there with my dogs. I cannot abandon my dogs. I talked about it in my last episode how I'd like to find somebody to take them. I should mention that's like an ultimate, like superbly last resort because I, you know, when your pets are the only living things in your life and they're like really your family. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's painful to even think about not having them around anymore. So I'm trying to figure something out. So it's a pickle, you know? It's like I, I can't deal with wage slave. I just, oh, I can't do that again. I cannot. It's just, I, I would spend every day just focus on everything that I hate about that play about fast food and work because those are the only places that will hire you when you're outdoors. It doesn't matter how smart you are and how much you know. Like that's just that's those are your options. They nobody gives a shit. And there's no reason why they should, because most people who are outdoors like me are there for a good reason. <laughs> I mean, they're where they belong. I, I don't, they're not, nobody belongs here. I don't, it's complicated. <laughs> Just, I'm not like anybody else I know out here. Like, you can't hang out with people. Other, I used to, when I did this before, I won't now, because they're just nothing but trouble. Because everybody's a raging alcoholic. <laughs> I don't drink. <laughs> I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> All I do is, <laughs> and their whole, you know, the homeless community in general, the whole, cycle of life is waking up in the morning trying to find money for booze drinking those booze till you pass out waking up in the morning I repeat the process that's what most of them do you know there's some hippie traveler folk kind like me but they're younger and christopher mccandless starry-eyed dipshits <laughs> it's just, it's not my scene I don't think they even allow rainbow gatherings anymore. Last time I heard they were canceled. I don't know. They might still be going on. It's just super underground. I'm just fully unplugged from that now. I'm unplugged from everything. Like that's, that's why I have like no circle of friends or anything more. Cause I had to turn my back on another fucking entire lifestyle <laughs> again. Try to figure out how to get back into my old one because that was my best best path up, which I didn't realize up was the only way to go. Good way to go. <laughs> I thought there might be something to gain from you know going backwards and de evolving and living in the woods <laughs> as primates again, but no, at least not from my point of view. <laughs> Complete epic waste of time. I mean, don't get me wrong, nature's great, and you should definitely spend time in the woods. It's very healing, and there's a lot of 
Ugh, it's complicated. I learned a lot of interesting things about meditation. I mean, the whole thing started because I went to India and kind of plugged into that scene. It's, but it was a festival scene and I didn't agree with them on a value basis. The political values, or I don't know. It's all very... I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long video. It's going to take forever to upload. Oh, no, and I filmed it in the wrong direction, too. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I guess I could just keep talking about it. No, I'm tired. I'll talk about it some more tomorrow or the day after or later. Just put this up for now. Air it out for now. I'm trying. <laughs> I posted this thing the other day. I said, uh, no one ever told me that the journey of self-discovery could take you so far away from where you need to be once you figure out who you are. Um, but that implied that I knew who I was. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I knew who I am. I do know who I am. I just don't know what to do with who I am. What's the best thing to do with who I am to be free in this world? Because that's my idea, idea of success. Freedom is success. And freedom to me is being able to do whatever you want, whenever you want. And the only way you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, is when you have money. And even then there's limitations. And you've got to do all these things to make that money in the first place. But I think there's a balance to have, be had. There's a shortcut, you know, where you can do something that's not that difficult to make a decent amount of money. And if you're happy, if you figure out how to be happy with that, you know, if you get up to the point where you, you know, you can generate at least a half a million or a million dollars a year consistently. Um, I, I think it's possible for me to be very, you know, to live within that life. Because there's one interesting thing that I have learned very well. Well, there's a lot of interesting things I've learned very Learned very well from living um, this low in the living this below the living below the poverty line um, is how to live within your means. And I'm really good at that. Really good at that. So it's like you wouldn't believe how far I can get just with what I have. If I had a million dollars a year, the things I could do. I stretch that money in so many different directions. Because <laughs> that's, that's... I don't have a limited number of ideas. I have a limited number of resources. My resources don't match my ideas. I have an endless pool of ideas. I lack the resources to realize them. Or I'm telling myself that. I could kick my dog to the curb, say fuck you. Hoof it to a city and go for it. And I'd hate myself forever. It'd be like abandoning my children. There's got to be a way to do this so I can keep my dogs. That's, I mean, that's not asking. Is that asking too much from the universe? Can, can I find a way to thrive in this world without having to give up my dogs? Please. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Just that. You know? <laughs> I just want to find a way to thrive without having to give up my dogs. I can survive without giving them up. But it's fucking boring. <laughs> I'll think of something. Till then.